Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, I wanna talk you through my annual review process, where I basically think about and write down all of the things that I'm grateful for, the people that I'm grateful for, uh, the stuff I've discovered that year, lessons I've learned, and stuff that I wanna kind of do more better the following year. If you haven't done an annual review before, then I would highly recommend that you do it. And I'll show you the process that I go through so maybe you can get some ideas. And I'll be sharing my template that I'm using for this on Notion so that if you want, you can just kind of duplicate that template and you can go through this process yourself. So this is my uh, Life OS kind of notebook. This is kind of a kind of a nerdy joke on my part. Well, it's not really a joke, it's kind of true because I, like I like to use Notion as like the operating system for my life. So I've got like my daily highlights and some of my weekly reviews here but I've also got my annual reviews and I'm gonna show you the non-private one uh, where I've removed all the potentially sensitive things. Now, here are the general kind of categories of stuff that I like to mention in my annual review. So firstly, I like to talk about stuff that I'm grateful for, then stuff I discovered, then life lessons, then stuff to work on for next year, um, and then like a bucket list of kind of just general things I'd like to do at some point in my life, and that can be as unrealistic as we want. And previously I used to do this on Evernote, uh, but the nice thing about Notion is that you can use these toggle features, which means that uh, it, it doesn't like turn into this whole ass massive page of stuff. You can kind of put things in, in these toggles. So let's start with experiences. This is just a few of them. Um, stuff I'm grateful for, recent trip to Japan, recent trip to Seville in Spain, a trip to Sudan in January was quite nice, super nice, friendly people, healthy amount of figuring, figure outing going on in the clinics, etc. So like alongside each one, I've just written a few notes for myself to jog my memory because kind of the point of the annual review is not just to reflect on the year and to plan the following year, but I think in maybe five, six, seven, ten years time, it'll be really nice to look back on the annual reviews that I've been doing since 2017 and seeing kind of the trajectory of where my life has gone, which is why I like to add a few a few bits of explanation to each one. So that is experiences, general surgery placement, really enjoy the teamwork, making friends with Comey, Joe, and Antonia. Those were some colleagues that I was working with. Uh, guys, if you're watching, then thanks, uh, you're great. Next, I've got like people. Now in this, I've, I actually had like a list of about 100, 100 people, but I've got rid of most of them because you don't need to know and a few of them were sensitive and all that stuff. Um, but Tame is my brother. I've said that the podcast has been quite fun. We've been having good chats. And I think he's a really good sounding board for ideas. So Tamil, if you're watching, you're probably not because you don't watch any of my videos. Uh, then, you know, thank you for that. Uh, Molly is my housemate. Uh, a few notes about Molly. So socializing by default. By this, I mean, it's really nice to have someone that I can just kind of talk to by default when I get home from work. And that's been really nice. Um, Molly's also kind of taught me a lot about uh, sort of feeling and expressing my own emotions and getting better, better at communication and, and stuff like that. Uh, and has been offering some pretty good advice about love life amongst other things. So thanks, Molly, for that. Paul, yeah, he started a podcast recently, so it's really nice having a creative friend uh, to talk to about that sort of stuff. Um, and just a few other notes about some of my other friends, and I've deleted loads. So if you're a friend of me and mine in real life and you're not on this list, don't worry, you're probably in the private one. I just don't wanna share all of this stuff publicly. Also, I put Thomas Frank on the list. He's great, he's another productivity YouTuber. Uh, he's a lot bigger than I am, but he like, gave, really gave me a lot of really good advice a few months ago, and he introduced me to the agency that I'm now part of, which is called Standard. Uh, we've got Dave who runs Standard and signed me onto this agency and that's really changed the game in terms of YouTube because it means that now we can do sponsored videos pretty much whenever and that means that there's a lot more money coming in which means that I can actually hire people full time and I can kind of scale the YouTube channel in a way that I haven't really been able to do before. So thanks guys for that. Simon Clark, uh, I haven't actually met Simon Clark in real life but he was uh, one of the two YouTubers that uh, really inspired me to start this YouTube channel. Um, I'll put a link to his channel down below. And Peter McKinnon, everyone knows Peter McKinnon, famous photography, videography uh, YouTuber. He was another big inspiration in starting this channel. He recently, yeah, uh, I've, <laughs> I've written here that he recently uh, released a camera bag on Kickstarter. And as soon as I saw this, I was like immediately dropped $500 on it. And it, it was really weird because I, I don't usually get emotional about things, but like when I, when I was buying that camera bag, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Finally have a chance of, <laughs> of giving back to Peter McKinnon, who's uh, inspired me to start this YouTube channel. Anyway, moving on. Uh, accomplishments. I, I feel a bit uneasy about the word accomplishments because like, you know, I don't like the idea of taking credit for stuff, but you know, people say you should talk about your accomplishments in your annual review and this is normally a private thing. So I apologize, but yeah, um, you know, YouTube growth, revenue growth, hiring a full-time team member, you launching an online UK cat course. Uh, we launched a podcast, me and my brother, we've been doing it for the last like 36 weeks uh, with some semblance of consistency, which has been good. Email newsletter has grown quite a lot. I think this time last year it was maybe 4,000 subscribers. Now we're on 18,000 subscribers, which is awesome. 
Instagram recently hit 50K, which is cool. I became a physiology supervisor at Girton College, Cambridge, which has been really fun and a nice accomplishment. I think I've gotten a little bit more hench, like, you know, been going to the gym semi-regularly <laughs> for the last few weeks. <laughs> and so people have been commenting on, on the biceps, whatever. Uh, combating hair loss with finasteride. I've, I've been taking finasteride since like January and I feel like my hair has, has kind of grown back a little bit. Um, and a little bit of chat about dating. There were a few more things on the list, but I got rid of some. And then like stuff that I'm grateful for. Again, this is gonna seem a bit big headed, but this is normally supposed to be a private thing, but I thought I'd, I'd share some of it. Um, so I absolutely love my desk setup. I've got a video about it that I'll link down below, but anytime like it's clean, it's not right now. There's loads of stuff behind the camera that you can't see. But anytime my desk is clean, I just feel like a real inspiration to, to create stuff. My car is really quite nice. So this is something I've been actively trying to tell myself because I drive like a, a eight year old car that I've been driving for the last like five years and you know, it's broken down a fair bit, but I'm trying to kind of, I'm trying to talk myself out of wanting to buy a Tesla. So I'm been having, having to reiterate to myself that actually, you know, my car is really quite nice. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Uh, the flat is great, Philips Hue light bulbs are awesome. Uh, there was this notebook that I enjoyed. My, I discovered the Adidas Ultra Boost shoes, which have been really comfortable and, you know, just stuff like that. And then game changers. Uh, so uh, I, put, I put three things on this list. Firstly, a standard that I said is the um, agency that I'm, I'm now part of that has really helped uh, generate sponsored videos for this, for this channel. Uh, number two is editor. So I started outsourcing the editing of these videos about six months ago, and as soon as I kind of took that plunge, I mean, perhaps it was, it, was, it was even four months ago, as soon as I took that plunge, then suddenly like so much of my own time was freed up every week and I could kind of do more things like go to the gym and try and eat a bit more healthily and stuff like that. And finally, I think like Notion, the, this, this app that I'm doing this on has genuinely been a game changer because like I use Notion for so many different things. I think it's one of the few apps that by design and like just because of the app, it's sort of changed the way I think about stuff a little bit. And I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring the video. This was on this list before I knew this was gonna be a sponsored video. So yeah, anyway, next we're talking about stuff I discovered this year. Again, I've just cut it down for, for clarity. The Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, really good series of books I've been listening to on Audible. Building a Second Brain, I see a, a workshop online course series of blog posts by a guy called Tiago Forte. That's sort of changed the way I think about content creation and about note taking. Uh, Notion, I've talked about that already. The Julian Method for Building Muscle. There's this guy called Julian at julian.com and he's written this like really in-depth guide that's very followable about how to build muscle effectively. And I've been literally following that uh, sort of and I found that working out and going to the gym and stuff while listening to Audible is much more fun now that I've got this method to follow. And I've tried loads of things over the years, strong lifts and 531 and a few others, but, Julia, but the Julian method is the one that I think I've stuck to for the longest, so yeah. The E-Myth is a book, I'm blanking on who it's by, but it talks a lot about how to grow a small business. Um, and I run a small business called SixMed, uh, and I think I made a lot of mistakes in the early stages of SixMed by not delegating enough and by thinking that I had to do everything. And now in my, for my second business, this YouTube channel, I'm starting to, I feel like I'm incorporating a lot of these lessons a bit more. And the E-Myth was a really good book that helped me out with that. Discovered that you can use an oven to cook food. Discovered the power of light lunches, that if you eat a heavy lunch, then you feel like really full for the rest of the day and feel tired. If you eat a light lunch, then at least for me, I feel more energized. Uh, Leuchtturm 1917, some, somewhere in my bag, it's like a physical notebook that I like writing stuff by hand in. Uh, Bulletproof Radio, stuff about biohacking, that's a podcast that I, I listen to. There's a few other things on the list, but let's move on. Next, we're talking about life lessons. So all 15 of these are actually uh, editions of my email newsletter. So anytime I come across a good life lesson that I find it, that I think is valuable, I share it in my weekly email newsletter. So every Sunday I send this email out to now 18,100 people as of, uh, as of the time of this recording. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna sign up. You can check out all the previous issues, but just going through life lessons quickly. Um, you know, if this, if this isn't nice, I don't know what is. This is a quote from Kurt Vonnegut, who wrote, he, he wrote it in one of his books or something. And he says that, you know, as you're going through life, take, take a bit of time every now and then to ask yourself if this isn't nice, I don't know what is. And that just reminds us to be grateful of things. Uh, the daily highlight, uh, I'm gonna be working on a video on that, but essentially the idea is that every day you pick a single thing that you're gonna focus on and that's gonna be your highlight of the day. Uh, window openers versus door knockers, an analogy that, came, that I discovered in a podcast. Obvious to you, amazing to others. This is reference to a blog post by Derek Sivers. The flywheel concept that I first came across in a, I wanna say Jim Collison interview on the Tim Ferriss show, something like that. Master boring fundamentals, uh, life life advice, productivity thing that I learned from a guy called James Stuber. Basically there's a long list of stuff. I'll put links to all of these different email newsletters, all 15 of them in the video description so you can kind of click on them and find out more. But essentially the idea of the life lessons thing is that when you're doing your annual review, then uh, you can note down the lessons that you learned that year. 
And I think that's quite a nice thing to look back on. Like I look back on my 2017 ones. And I think in 2017, I wrote about the power of consistency. And that's something that uh, has really helped like grow everything that I've ever tried to do, like my business, YouTube channel, podcast and stuff. Just really about the power of just being consistent with things. Anyway, next we've got stuff to work on for next year. So yeah, of the three things that I've kind of split this into is life, medicine and side hustles for now. I'm gonna add more to this list. This is sort of a work in progress, but I thought I'd share it as, you know, we're approaching the end of the year and you know, you might wanna do your own annual review. Anyway, so I wanna get more consistent at going to the gym. Uh, I think it's much more possible now that I don't have to edit a lot of these videos by myself, which is fantastic. I wanna get a lot better at cooking. I don't really cook a lot. I make poached eggs occasionally, make some pasta occasionally, but more often than not, I either eat at work, get a McDonald's drive-thru on the way home or order takeaway from Deliveroo, uh, which is quite bad. So I wanna get into cooking. Uh, storytelling, I wanna get better at telling stories. This is kind of good in real life, just as a general social skill that I discovered in a book by Tynan called Superhuman Social Skills, which is actually really good. Uh, but also telling stories is really important when you're making videos and writing stuff on the internet and you know, stuff like that. Yeah, dating. I think I'm, I've, I've started writing more about this. Normally when I'm doing an annual review, I, I would flesh this out, but I'm filming it, I'm filming this on the 20th of December. So over the next like 10, 11 days, I'm gonna flesh these things out more. I just wanted to share it. But yeah, I think I wanna, wanna make more of an effort with dating and trying to, trying to meet more people, you know, stuff like that. I'm gonna be 26 next year. So I feel like, you know, might as well get on that uh, <laughs> sooner rather than later. Anyway, uh, medicine, figure out what specialty to apply for, take some exams, get pro at teaching communication skills. I'm currently training as a facilitator for communication skills, uh, get pro teaching physiology, maybe make some videos. And then side hustles, these are some like ideas of things that I wanna do for the YouTube channel, for the blog, for the podcast, that sort of stuff. And finally, um, I think it's important to have in our annual reviews a bucket list. Yeah, a bucket list can, can be as unrealistic as you like and I've started making mine. I normally have at least like 50 things on the bucket list just because I find it is generally quite useful to just think about everything in life that I could possibly want to be doing and then just chuck it onto the bucket list. And you know, maybe some of them will happen, maybe some of them won't, but like it just sort of gives us that level of kind of background processing. Like if I've got, you know, let's see, learn archery on my bucket list. Just the fact that I've written that down means that if the opportunity comes up to learn archery or I have some time one afternoon and the thought comes to me that, oh, you know, I wonder what's on my bucket list, then I might seek out archery lessons or find some kind of week long holiday camp where you learn archery and stuff like that. And just kind of saying this to the video now makes me want to Google how to do archery. And like, I'm sure there's some kind of retreat that you can go on where you hunt rabbits and eat them and you know, stuff like that. But I think just the act of writing things down is, is really helpful in that, in that regard. So on my list, become a Gymshark athlete. That is, you, you know, that's never gonna happen, but just the fact that it's on my bucket list means that it encourages me to go to the gym more consistently, eat more consistently and get better at social media. So, you know, I think it's good to have on the bucket list. A few collabs that I'd really like to do. Uh, archery, sword fighting is really cool. I've recently been reading loads of fantasy book series for the last like two, three years now. Uh, and you know, obviously sword fighting is a big part of fantasy. Busk on the London Underground and film it. They're definitely on the bucket list. Write a book, host a revision retreat. My brother and I had this idea, right? So we like this idea of getting a group of people together and maybe getting an Airbnb cottage in a random place like, you know, in the Lake District in the UK or in you know, the south of France or something where we get sort of 10, 15 people together. And the idea is that we would study for our exams kind of during the day. And then in the evenings, we'd just kind of chill out and have food and play board games and stuff, sort of like a revision retreat. So that's something that I maybe want to do next year, maybe the year after at some point. Film a study with me video in a ridiculous location. I thought it'd be cool to film like a study with me video, like, you know, in front of the pyramids in Egypt or, you know, some, some like weird exotic location like that. I'm not saying Egypt is weird, but you, you know, you probably get the message. Get married, have a kid, <laughs> perform a magic show, teach a medicine revision lecture series, pass the MRCP, MRCS, F MRCOG and FRCA. These are all various postgraduate medical exams. I kind of like the idea of doing all of them just for bants because I love studying and I love exams, but you know, it's on the bucket list. It doesn't have to be realistic, it's fine. Convert a room into a YouTube studio, we'll see. Buy to let a house. I want to buy a house and then rent it out. It's like, you know, real estate investment. Uh, buy a Tesla Model 3, it's on the bucket list. <laughs> It's gonna happen at some point, but you know, I wanna convince myself that my current car is legit for as long as I can. Stream on Twitch, join a World of Warcraft raiding guild, and yeah, I'm just gonna flesh this more out as, as we go along. So this is sort of the stuff that I, I like to put in my annual reviews. There are loads of other ways of doing an annual review. And again, in the video description, I'm gonna to link to a few others, other formats for annual review. For example, Tiago Forte, who runs this building a second brain thing. His annual review is like 50 different questions, but a lot of them are quite like goal orientated and list your top three wins for the year. What are your top goals for next year? And I just don't really like the idea of having goals. Uh, I much prefer the idea of just kind of enjoying the process, having systems that, you know, I wanna release a video a week rather than I wanna to get to a million subscribers by the end of 2020. 
because I think like numerical goals like that are at least like they don't really sit very well with me because I sort of feel that it kind of flies in the face of all this stuff about gratitude and about what we have being enough and kind of explicitly defining goals in that sense, you know, it's the sm smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, timely, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't quite sit well with me, but you know, I could be wrong. Maybe I'll change my mind about goal setting next year, who knows? But yeah, there's loads of ways of doing an annual review. This is just the way I like to do mine. And as I said, I'll link my Notion template in the video description. So if you wanna do an annual review like this, then you can just duplicate that template into your own Notion account. By the way, if you don't yet have a Notion account, you can sign up for a free one. If you're a student, just use your .ac or .edu email address and you'll get a personal account completely free. You can get a free trial of Notion that has a thousand block limit. And, and a block is like sort of a piece of content on Notion. So you can definitely try it out for free if you really want to. And actually, I think you should be able to do an annual review with far less than a thousand blocks. Or if you wanna subscribe, like I pay for $4 a month, $5 a month for the premium subscription. It's good, it's good. Like, you know, Notion is one of the apps that's actually changed the game for me and I use it to organize most things in my life now. So easily worth the money that I pay for it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you gained some ideas about what you can do with an annual review. You know, if you're doing an annual review and you feel like making it public so the rest of us can see, then leave a link to your Notion workspace in the comments down below. Uh, and I will definitely take a look and, you know, we can share some ideas about what makes a good annual review. And also if you have any ideas that I haven't put in mind of things that like questions to ask ourselves or things that might work nicely in an annual review sort of annual reflection thing, then again, leave a comment down below and I'll, you know, look and reply to all of them or at least I'll try. So yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, you might like some of the other videos I've done on Notion. Links will be over there. Thanks for watching and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.